Hey everyone, so today we're going to create a simple GraphQL server using Nest.js and TypeScript. Specifically, we're going to be creating an API that's similar to the tutorial app on Apollo Docs, where they use Express instead of Nest.js. So the data that we're going to get is coming from the SpaceX API, and the only schema that we're going to be concerning ourselves with is going to be the, the launch schema here. Now before we get started, you should already have the Nest.js CLI. If you don't, you can just add it using NPM. Once you do, you can create a new project. And I think I'm just going to call it the space, Nest Space. And go ahead and create your project. And I'll be using Yarn for this. But this will take a while, but while it's creating the initial project scaffold, so just hang tight. After that's done, you should have a project that looks like this. We're going to need to add a couple more packages. The first one's going to be Nest.js GraphQL, which depends on GraphQL tools and GraphQL. So install those. And once that's done, we could open up our app module file. And this is where we're going to add our GraphQL module, which is the package that we just installed earlier. And that's going to go into the imports array. Now it takes some configuration, so we're going to open up the for root method. The first one that we're concerned about is type defs. And we're going to give it a file path for all the GraphQL files that we're going to create. And what this basically means is that we're creating our server schema first. So we're going to write the GraphQL schema in its own file and then have our application use those types. But because we're using TypeScript, uh, it would be useful to have those types as TypeScript types so that we can have better IntelliSense. And for that, we're going to use the attribute definitions, which takes an object and we're giving it a path. And all this does is that we're going to create the definition file. That's pretty much all we need for a GraphQL setup. So now let's create our launch module. So I'm going to use the command nest generate module launch. And while I'm here, I'm also going to generate the service and resolver for the launch module. And after you do that, you can open up your launch directory. And these are the files that we created. And lastly, we're going to make a launch.graphql file where we're going to define our schema. If we go back to the Apollo docs, the launch type is what we're concerned with. And we scroll down, you'll see that there's mission and rocket, which are other schemas that this schema is dependent on. And they're all here. So I'm going to add that to our schema file. And we don't actually need user, so I'm going to get rid of that right now. And now if we start our server, by running yarn start dev, Apollo server express package is missing. Oh, okay. So I guess I forgot to add that. So let's install that package. Apollo server express. And then before we get ahead of ourselves, let's make sure that we add a query type here. We're getting all launches and then a specific launch by the ID. And then I'm gonna make one update to the launch type. I'm gonna get rid of is booked. Cause that's required for the Apollo tutorial app where a launch can be booked by a user. Uh, we're only concerned with querying data in this video, so let's get rid of that. Now, if we st use yarn start dev, our server has started successfully, even though it doesn't do anything at the moment. But the important part is that our type definitions have been automatically generated by Nest.js. Now with that, let's jump into our service and fill out some functionality. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is add a private variable called at or API URL. And that's going to be the URL to the SpaceX API. And to communicate with that API, we're going to need an HTTP request library. And Nest.js has Axios built into it in the form of HTTP service. Now the only difference between this and normal Axios is that all of the responses come in the form of observables instead of promises, which is going to be good enough for us. And this launch service is going to have two methods, get all launches and get launched by ID. And the methods are pretty predictable. We're going to just do a HTTP request to uh, the API slash launches and return the data. And with the service, we can go into our resolver here and we can inject that service using the normal Nest.js dependency injection syntax like so in the constructor. 
Now the launch resolver is going to be responsible for uh, responding to these two queries down here. So we're going to do one for launches and one for launch. And those are the corresponding methods. We need to add the decorators of query to both of them so that Nest.js knows that these are GraphQL queries. And also make sure that query comes from uh, Nest.js GraphQL because there's another query decorator in Nest.js common that you don't want to be using. It's kind of annoying since they're the same name, but yeah. And both of these queries are going to respond with the two service methods that we just created. Get launch by ID requires an ID. So launch is going to get ID from the argument here. Now to get the ID here, it is going to be corresponded to this. And we can get that by another decorator. This one is called args. And we specifically only want the ID argument. And then we can provide it in there like that. And our server is saying that we need to import HTTP service. So going back to our launch module, we're going to add a imports array here. And here we're going to get the HTTP service module. Okay, it's called HTTP module, not HTTP service. So a little typo on my part. But once that's done, the server is good to go. And we can go check out our GraphQL server. And SJS comes uh, with the GraphQL playground like this. One thing is that these queries are not going to work. They're going to break. What's the schema for this? ID site. The reason why it's breaking is because the data that is coming back from the API is not a one-to-one -one mapping of how we want our data to look like. So if I go to Postman and look at the SpaceX API, go to slash launches. After it pretty fast. Okay. Um, this is the data that's coming back. And this is much bigger than what we actually want. So we need to transform the data to into something that we could output. So we're going to go back to our service and then we're going to create a transformation method here. And I'm going to make it a private method called to launch. This is a good chance to introduce type safety. So what we're going to do is create a new file called launch.model.ts. And there's a tool on the internet called QuickType where we could generate a type for us based on the API response. So I'm going to go down here and generate code. And let's grab an individual launch. And just copy this whole thing. Paste it here. And this is going to be a SpaceX launch. And what we want is a TypeScript type. All right, so I only want the interface, and I think that's good. Let's just copy this, add it to our launch model. I'm going to save it so everything looks prettier. And now in our to launch method, we can do launch, and it is of the type SpaceX launch. And the type that we actually want is not going to be a specifically launch. It's going to look a little different, so what we're going to do instead is create a new type at the very bottom of this launch model. And I'm going to call it launch model. So it's going to extend launch, but the way our GraphQL schema is created, um, there's a property called mission patch. So we actually want to hold inside of our cache a different model so that we could resolve this property. If you don't understand what that means, it'll make more sense as we keep going. So the two extra properties on our launch model is going to look like, and with the types out of the way, that means that we could finish out our to launch method. And now we have the return type that we can use, which is launch model from our launch model. Now I'm going to be a little lazy because the Apollo docs already have a transformation method. So I'm going to copy that. And here we'll just do return. Uh, too many prints. And now we need to fix this up a little bit. So I'm gonna coerce the ID to a string. And I think we need to fix our launch model because these are on a nested. All right, so instead of the root launch, it's gonna be inside of mission. So I'm gonna do mission, add these in here. And what's on the normal mission? Name, I'll do name here. And I'll use an advanced type called omit. And we're going to just 
I meant the mission property from launch, so that should look good. And then finally, cursor we don't need right now, so I'm just gonna get rid of that at the moment. And that should be good to go. Now all we need to do is make sure that we add to launch to our uh, get here. And such the HTTP service returns an observable. We're allowed to use RxJS. Specifically, I want the operators, and I think the only one I want is gonna be map. So basically we're gonna treat the promise or the data stream as an array, and then we can map over it the same way you would use array.map. So here we could add pipe, and we're gonna use map. And because it's using Axios under the hood, the data is inside the nested data property, where we can do data.map and provide the this.toLaunch. And then we can do the same thing here. We can get data, and then this is the right parent, right? Yeah. Now the this.toLaunch data. And I believe that should look right. Um, let's just add some types here. So this is an observable uh, launch model. And as long as TypeScript doesn't scream at us, we should be good to go. So it, that's everything for most of it. And so check our server, it's still going, which is good. And let's go into our playground and check if this works. So I'm gonna press play. And ID and site all works correctly. And if we look at our schema, we can now check mission and rocket. Mission is gonna fail because we haven't done that yet, but we can do the rocket. Then we add rocket here. And what's inside of a rocket? There's ID, name, and type. Which all come back correctly. Now mission requires us to do right name is fine. There's our mission. And then this is the part that's gonna fail. If we do mission patch, we have to provide an argument of size. Yeah. And I'm going to go with small. Size is small. And now it's gonna fail. Or not fail, it's gonna give us null. So to fix that, we're gonna have to add another resolver. So I'm gonna quit this and generate another resolver inside of launch called mission resolver. And I want this to be in the root of launch as well as giving us no test file. Okay, I think I'm not in typo. Let's try that again. There we go, sweet. Now we have a launch resolver and this will resolve the type of mission. And the only thing here that we need to do is just make sure that we take in the uh, enum. So I'm just going to add resolve field for the decorator. And the method name is mission patch because it has to match the property that we're using. Now we know that we have the argument of size because that's where we're sending it. But we also need another property here. And the decorator is going to be the parent. And the parent is basically the object that's in the cache. So we're gonna check the size and I'm using a switch case here. And based on which patch size that we send, we're gonna return a different thing. And no surprise, it's the two properties that we added to the launch model earlier. And if we save this and go to our server, this null should not should no longer be a null. If, oh wait, actually we need to provide the size. So let's do that again. Fail to fetch. Check your connection. Oh, that's because the server's not on. Okay, now the server's running. And we press play again. There it is. And here's our mission patch. This is the small version. And we can change this to large. Which should give us a different thing. And I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to just... Rerun the query. And this 
this image should change, so there you go. So now let's kill the server. Alright, so that's it for today. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see me finish out this little tutorial project. If not, that's cool too. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time.